So, um, before we do any system design exercise on uh, uh, you know using air quality sensors, uh, we should be familiar with several. So, essentially there should be a good preparation towards understanding the kind of values that uh, you are likely to get. We discussed about uh, the calibration effort which is a major part, lot of uh, analytical methods are available today you may have to put a box which has a lot of sensors gather, you know gather the data and then run through these uh, analytical techniques. Simple statistical methods like linear regression, uh, linear multivariate regression, then uh, uh, it could be uh, artificial neural networks all these techniques are you know they will give you good predictable results provided you have good quality data. And we mentioned that it is important to create this good quality data. Before we even go further into this uh, you know building a system or showing a demonstration of this, it is important to know a few terms and also it is important to know when you want to go out and buy a sensor, you will see a plethora of uh, options with you each one having its own advantage and disadvantage. So, which one will you buy? What are the gas detection technologies which are available and uh, therefore, can we uh, sort of get an idea of what are all possible in this world of air quality monitoring. For that I want you to go back and download what is known as a gas detection handbook. You can see the fifth edition of this book is available freely available you do not have to uh, you just have to download and then you get some key concepts. and. Uh, several nice things to learn from this I learned quite a bit from this. So, let us run through this and uh, it will give you a client you can at uh, leisure you can uh, sort of uh, read them through. But uh, I would say um, for example, understanding some definitions some terms are also very very important. For example, if you want to look at calibration right procedure by which the performance of a detector is verified to maximize the accuracy of its readings. A calibration is performed by comparing the instrument with a known standard and adjusting the instrument reading to match the standard. Essentially uh, it is uh, simple for a very checking whether a detector is performing well. Quite like that uh, when you look at uh, in this area of uh, gas uh, air quality gas detection and all that cross sensitivity I mentioned this so many times and absolutely critical to understand what it means the predictable response of a detector to compounds other than the target gas. Major problem biggest uh, bottleneck a big thorn in the detection of a particular uh, you know you know pollutant right. So, that is a big problem. In fact, if you buy sensors you have to see how much of it it is cross sensitive to other gases and therefore, uh, it is important for you to uh, know this term very well and understand that any system design has this problem in air quality. Perhaps all these reasons as I mentioned earlier are really cause uh, the cause for uh, IOT not taking off for the purpose of air quality large scale uh, highly spatial monitoring of um, you know uh, air quality monitoring has not taken off because of this. So, cross sensitivity is, uh, sensitivity is a issue. Then there are different types of sensors, electrochemical is one of them a sensor that uses an electrochemical reaction to provide an electrical output proportional to the measured gas concentration. This is another important term that you will come across, you will come across semiconductor, you will come across electrochemical and you will come across IR techniques and so on. We will see them as we go along very quickly. So, then uh, okay, so, then these are important okay, then you can read them as you go along. Definition of PPM the most common unit of measurement for toxic gases a 10,000 parts per million 
gas concentration level equals to 1 percent by volume exposure. So, it is important to understand this definition sink it in ppm is defined here relative density is also here then uh, threshold limit value also important then vapor and vapor density this is also important vapor pressure. So, what I want you to look up is this oxygen for example, ox people talk so much about under low pressure the uh, oxygen content also comes down uh, while uh, you talk about uh, this uh, 20 point 95 percentage of air um, is uh, oxygen and 78 point uh, 09 percent is the nitrogen all that you say, but that is under uh, highest one atmosphere right. Uh, but as you go up the atmosphere uh, pressure comes down and as pressure decreases at greater heights the oxygen also comes uh, down. So, this uh, by volume percentage volume uh, if it comes down by how much humans will be affected is something that this chart is telling you. You can see ambient air oxygen 20.8 oxygen level dips to 19.5 of the total atmosphere uh, you are already saying it is oxygen deficient. So, we are very sensitive to the amount of oxygen that we you should have in the air for us to breathe normally ok. Uh, life supporting oxygen may be displaced by other gases such as carbon dioxide in the event that it comes down from 20.8 to 19.5. <coughs> other bad pollutant gases may occupy uh, the uh, you know the displaced gas which is essentially oxygen. So, the really that is a problem you do not want CO2 to increase at the cost of reduced oxygen right. So, that is the problem and if there is too much of CO2 it can be dangerous or fatal. So, oxygen deficiency uh, uh, you know is an issue. All right, so, let us see there is a nice chart here from 20.8 if it comes down to 19.5 to 16 uh, not so much, but we are already having a problem. But if it comes down between 16 and 12 increased breathing rate accelerated heartbeat impaired attention thinking and coordination 14 and 10 faulty judgment and poor muscular coordination right muscular exertion causing rapid fatigue then intermittent respiration 10 and 6 is nausea and vomiting inability to perform vigorous movement or loss of ability to move unconscious followed by death already 10 to 6 ok. Below 6 difficulty breathing convulsive movements death in minutes you see as the oxygen level keeps falling the system really goes down. So, critical monitoring means you have to do oxygen monitoring also to ensure that life is you know all the time there. So, we have to look at the gas detection technologies uh, if you have to um, buy a sensor and there are many many types of uh, sensors available among them catalytic bead, metal oxide semiconductor also called solid state, point infrared short path, open long path infrared, photo acoustic infrared, electrochemical for toxic gas, electrochemical for oxygen detection, thermal conductivity, photo ionization, NDIR are all different types of gas detection technologies that are common ok. So, you can go through this uh, manual it will tell you uh, what technology and for what type of gas uh, this uh, technology is best suited. So, you can go on reading this you can see that it will also tell you about the technology. Among them is metal oxide semiconductor um, uh, most popular because in silicon you can make them uh, you can make gas sensors and perhaps a hot topic everybody wants to make the best silicon uh, gas uh, detection sensor. So, that it is made cheap 
and uh, large scale monitoring is possible only if you have a MOS uh, metal oxide not MOS metal oxide uh, uh, semiconductor based uh, devices. So, you can see a semiconducting material uh, is used and the principle of operation is pretty straightforward. Uh, it is made of a metal oxide that changes resistance in response to presence of. So, you can see this is the most important sentence there change in changes resistance in response uh, all the effort is measurement of change in resistance in response to presence of gas ok. And then you this change is measured and translated into some concentration and uh, you start reading from there. So, uh, the principle is mentioned here a semiconducting material is applied to a non conducting uh, substance between two electrodes the substrate is heated to a temperature. See this if you read this carefully you will follow the data sheet very easily this is important. What does it mean by reading this sentence it says temperature at which the presence of gas can be can cause a reversible change in the conductivity of semiconducting material um, that is when no gas is present oxygen is ionized onto the surface and sensor becomes semiconductive when molecules of the gas of interest are present they replace the oxygen ions decreasing the resistance between the electrodes. This change is measured electrically and is proportional to to the concentration of the gas being measured. So, you can see oxidation and reduction uh, principles are applied uh, in on this semiconductor uh, material because you are talking about uh, oxygen ions being replaced right uh, and uh, being replaced with the molecules of the gas of interest right and then there are two electrodes and it says that all this reaction is possible only under heated condition. So, what should a semiconductor sensor have very straightforward you should have a heater to, to, to heat it then there will be an electrode one electrode and another electrode then you will have oxidation on one side reduction on the other side. That means giving up of oxygen small ions and accepting of oxygen ions one will measure one type of gas the other will measure the other type of gas. NO2 and CO can be measured by the same sensor because oxidation and reduction process happens right there. So, you can measure both simultaneously, but all this is possible only if there is a under certain temperature condition that means you have to heat it under some heated condition which means there should be a heater. Heater means what you need to pass it must be some sort of everything is in a chip by the way right everything is inside silicon that means there must be a small resistor right inside and by the way making a passive on uh, silicon is quite straightforward uh, like uh, you know resistors and uh, capacitors are easy inductors are hard to build on uh, in silicon. So, people do not uh, attempt that uh, they try to put uh, inductors outside and all that, but that things are all changing you know that is in all in the VLSI world let us not get into that. But the point is you need a resistor and that uh, resistor uh, is something that uh, you can put it and then you have to connect one external resistor apply a certain voltage this heater will heat and uh, the temperature is maintained and when you pass the target gas uh, the oxygen ions will get uh, displaced and on the other side some other part the oxygen ion is accepted. So, you will have uh, oxidation and reduction uh, happening and therefore, you can measure the change in resistance and the change in resistance is directly proportional to the amount of ions which are uh, getting displaced uh, and that is measurable ok. Then that is why they say amperometric uh, methods of measuring they apply that and then uh, you quickly see the change in that resistance value is directly proportional to the ppm levels of gas ppb or ppm levels of gas that have been passed. So, straightforward, but system design means you should know the principle that is why this uh, particular thing you should understand very very well. So, let us see that uh, part ok. So, here you see uh, <laughs> this is important again 
uh, pros is high sensitivity detects low concentration levels you can detect very well wide operating range long life also that is also not a problem but here is the cons look at this non specific that means this semiconductor sensor is highly cross sensitive it is an issue to other compounds and the outputs are typically non linear you get a non linear output. So, that the paper which we spoke about uh, when we were talking about calibration has to be taken with a pinch of salt. We spoke about linear regression and uh, other techniques assuming that there is some linearity at the output, but uh, semiconductors essentially um, are not linear they do not give you a linear output they give you non linear output. So, it will be some polynomial fit that you will have to worry about uh, some log response perhaps. Um, therefore, uh, you may want to even examine where in this whole range of measurement of that sensor where is linearity maintained and apply a linear regression only to that uh, specific section uh, do not look at the full range of the <coughs> do not look at the full range but just look at that specific thing and say it is linear here and therefore, I will restrict myself my study only to this range and I will be able to measure accurately only up to this ppm level and beyond that it is not something that we may want to measure. Therefore, semiconductor sensors can be applied in that way if you are not interested in very accurate measurement ppb levels, but you want to show low medium and high okay, something called low medium and high three ranges accept is good acceptable uh, or not acceptable. So, some sort of division if you are able to do and uh, within that range you are able to show uh, that the gas concentration is in any one of these levels it is extremely good. So, quick and uh, quickly you will be able to get because you are really not going after uh, essentially you want when you are walking or when you are driving or anything you just want to get a first cut whether it is safe to go or not safe to go that is the first level. Then if you are a real deep scientist you are interested in going into the details of what is the PPB level that is being there. So, that is perhaps the next step, but for citizens at large people who want to use gas sensors uh, they do not really care about whether uh, what is the actual PPB level. Therefore, many such applications in the IoT world you should think like that. How will it benefit the common man and how can it be used in a manner that the uh, you make a rough measurement of it and uh, give a clean chit or no clean chit you say that you can walk you cannot walk this area is to be banned this area can be is safe safe unsafe regions this kind of demarcations if they are available is already extremely good. So, electrochemical and uh, semiconductor are most popular. So, you can see that he has given a picture here there is a silicon chip sensor film heater is there and all of that. Then you have uh, point infrared short path then you have electrochemical which are also very popular and I think it is good to spend time on this part as well uses an electrochemical reaction to generate a current proportional to the gas concentration um, which is what I was trying to say that there is some output current and amperometric methods can be applied here you basically have a current that is proportional to the gas concentration then you want to convert the the current into some voltage. So, what will you do you will put a transconductance amplifier some small op amp circuit will be there and that uh, op amp circuit will convert that current into some voltage and you measure the change in voltage and say that if there is some change in voltage that will correspond to the uh, concentration level of gas. So, in the metal oxide semiconductor part you are changing the resistance you may you are varying the resistance and uh, that is indicated of the PPP PPM level here it is current which is essentially changing. So, I think the amperometric uh, since it is called amperometric it is more applicable to the electrochemical sensors not so much to the actually not applicable to the, uh, the uh, metal oxide semiconductor. Uh, um, uh, gas detection technology at all okay so that's a correction from my side sensor is a chamber 
um, containing a gel or electrolyte and two active electrodes. The measuring sensing working electrode and a counter electrode. A third electrode is used to build up a constant voltage between the anode and the cathode. The gas sample enters the casing through a membrane oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction takes place at the cathode. When the positive ions flow to the cathode and negative ions flow to the anode a current proportional to the gas concentration is generated. So, no different from what a uh, the, the oxidation reduction uh, method that I mentioned to you with respect to semiconductor is actually it is the same thing is happening here as well and uh, so let us quickly look back at that. Uh, to see uh, if there is any difference yes so it is mentioned here ok this you can see that this is the same uh, there is a substrate in this case and there are again uh, two electrodes there you have a substrate heating and uh, you have uh, measurement exactly the same way two electrodes and two electrodes here as well but they did not mention anything about presence of an electrolyte right. So, perhaps um, this is a proprietary technology and uh, each manufacturer may do it his own way to, can, uh, to generate this uh, semiconductor sensors alright. So, principle wise it is the same you could read that and understand uh, better from a particular manufacturer. Alright, so before we move on the major advantage of electrochemical is you see here I would say full marks linear output. So, you can easily apply several of the techniques that we discussed in the other paper it is highly sensitive it is linear output and easy to handle only problem is it has limited shelf life and uh, its uh, lifetime is shortened in very dry and very hot environment. So, if there are extreme weather conditions I do not think the electrochemical sensors are very good, but it is very extreme conditions. But by and large I would recommend you to design your systems with the electrochemical sensors. Of course, wherever uh, uh, semiconductor is good one may also use them. So, please spend time reading this chart uh, this uh, particular uh, manual and that will help you to uh, you know get into the uh, details of the uh, <coughs> type of sensors that are available. So, semiconductor uh, sensors and uh, electrochemical. are important right. Let us now spend some time looking up um, one of these types of uh, sensors and uh, look at system design around that particular uh, part. <coughs> 